Hi, this is Bruce, and welcome to my tutorial on the Milviz DHC-2 Beaver. I'm in a cold and dark state, obviously, uh, with all the various options applied. And to uh, let you know that this is a video that I've done for myself so I can quickly review things in under 10 minutes in this case. Um, but I wanted to share it with the sim community so that we can learn from each other as well. So any comments are appreciated, um, any insights, we'd appreciate to have those. Um, so just to briefly mention, I'm using P3D version 4.3, Chase Plane for the views, Active Sky for the weather, Ultimate Traffic Live for the aircraft, and P3D's traffic as well. Windows 10, uh, i5 is overclocked, an SSD drive, and GTX 1070 uh, for NVIDIA, uh, just in case you're curious. So let's go ahead and kick through this real quickly now. Uh, we'll go up to add-ons, DHC2. By the way, that is just because of the aircraft that's pulled up. If it's a 3, it'll say 3. Um, we can go down to cold cover and pull that off. We can go down to the prop cover and pull that off. We can now go to the reds. By the way, these are optional. You don't have to have these all to start, but I just wanted you to see uh, how they looked and, and where they're placed. There you go. Now we're going to go ahead and pop into the interior. And um, my yoke, I was fiddling around earlier. I took the yoke out. I'll explain how I did that in just a second. If you pop into the interior and you find out that it's been secured like this with a strap, the way to get rid of that is just go up to the overhead here, DHC2, and toggle chocks and anchors. That coincides with those. Now a little uh, counterintuitive piece here. If you want to move it from the left to the right, left click on it and drag it to the right. And if you want to move it from the right to the left, right click on it, click it and drag it to the left. It's a little counterintuitive, but if you click with the side that you're starting with and drag it to the one you want it to go to, that maybe is the best way to remember it. If you want it to disappear, you can either click the oak like that with a left click, or these two plates down here on either side of that hole will bring it back or drop it away. So it's just that simple. The parking brake is here. You'll notice that when the parking brake is off, it is not all the way in. That's just how it looks. If you left click it, it comes out maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch, barely moves. But that's just what it looks like. And then the trims, if you needed to trim anything, and I don't recommend it, but you could, the nose up, nose down wheel is here. It's also on the co-pilot side, barely visible there. And then the rudder trim is here. The outside air temperature, etc., is there in case you wanted to review those. And then the battery switch, there's two halves to this. There's, they're red. You can see Alt and Bat. We're going to go ahead and turn on the battery side of it. We'll get back to the alternator later. Then we're going to check our fuel quantity. There's a, a triple gauge here, front, rear, and middle. And you can see that right now they're all full. And since we're looking at that, this is your tank selector. we got front. I'm right-clicking now to get it to center, right-clicking it again to get rear. So it travels in the direction of the mouse uh, click, right or left. Now you may, may wonder, you see off down here. You cannot right or left click into the off position. But if you push down on the mouse wheel, there's a little safety feature in this. That mouse wheel click will take it to off. They just don't want you to accidentally do that. So I just left clicked it to get back to where it was. And the same thing true is the starter here. If you're here on right or left and you're wondering how do I get it back to off, just middle click on your wheel there on the mouse wheel and it'll click to off again. That's just a safety feature. And by the way, that same safety feature works with the fuel shutoff here on that, that uh, lever. Otherwise, it will not work with a right or a left click. Just a little FYI. Those are just some special features that um, aren't intuitive just by looking at the aircraft, so come in kind of handy. I just use B for altimeter changes, but you can adjust it here with that knob as well. The nav light now is right down here. We're going to turn that on. What that does is it puts the red and green lights on the wingtips on steady so people can see that we're in here and we're active. The radio switch that will turn on all the electronics is over here. Just left click it. It fires all of these up now and they take just a second to come online. The um, squawk code is over here, and that's a Garmin GTX 330 transponder. And then up here, you've got your Garmin GNX 530 and 430. And I'm not going to go through all of those. I'm going to do a separate video, I think, because there's so many options that would make this particular video too long. And I'm, my goal is just to get it to be taxi ready. If you want to watch a uh, video on these, I'm going to make that here pretty soon. And then obviously your autopilot features are here and your automatic direction finder down there and your comms and your nav choices and ADFs and stuff here. So um, just to familiarize you with those, 
Um, we'll get back to those later. Like I said, just watch for a video that I think I can put out eventually here, and we'll cover all of those because there's just pages and pages of different options, and I bet you it takes longer than it takes to start this thing. So let's just jump then on to the chase. Um, the carb heat, just leave it cold. That's this black knob down here. There is a red one also, not to be confused. The uh, cabin heat is here, so you can just left click it up or down. But the one that's carb heat is like so, and you can push it all the way down, which is, you know, carb heat's on, or you can drag it up like so and leave it cold. So hot's down, cold's up, leave it cold. It's no, unless the uh, icing conditions are present and stuff, don't bother putting that on hot because you'll lose some power if you do. Um, the fuel oil emergency lever I already showed you is only achievable if you use your wheel mouse clicking. And then the fuel selector should be on the fullest tank available, which in this case is center. If your center of gravity, by the way, is too far forward, use the fuel in the front tank in flight. And if it's in the rearward part, use the rear tank in flight, just a little FYI to cover as you're traveling along just to keep an eye on those sorts of things. Then we're going to make sure, I'm going to back up a little bit because it's obviously too compressed. The propeller can be in the decreased mode like so, right? And then the lean, we're going to put the mixture way up to the top there. We're going to open up our throttle about a half an inch or so like that. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on the beacon light because we're going to start the engine here pretty soon, get the prop spinning. What that does is there's now a red flashing light on the top of the aircraft. The wobble pump, as it's called, is this red knobbed handle here. And what we're going to achieve is five pumps on that with a left click. And we're going to look for this fuel pounds to run up here to five in that green zone. Uh, so we'll just click this five times. One, two, three. We're just left left clicking four, five, and it should go up about 100 each time. So it's just about in the green, which is where we want it to be. So we'll just uh, let it go at that. You don't want to exceed five, so there's no point in just continuing to crank on that thing. And then we're going to turn the ignition switch on to both. I'm left clicking now, clear over to both. We're going to turn on the fuel boost switch with a left click and then hit the starter with a left click. And let's watch what happens. All right, so that was successful. Then we can go ahead and turn on the pitot heat if we want to. I always do, uh, no harm done there. You can see the landing light is here and the pulse light is there. The pulse light is the um, white flashing lights and they're on the tops of the wing tips, just to let you know where those are at also. And you notice the starter clicked off automatically so there's no reason to turn that off. And we'll go ahead and turn on the alternator now as well. Then all you'll be doing at this point, because we're ready to taxi and stuff, uh, after, of course, we put it in the cruise flaps condition, they recommend that just for controlling the uh, uh, taxi more efficiently. And we'll get the engine RPMs down to between eight, five and 800 here. This really can slow down a lot. All right, there we go. So we're in a taxi ready condition. Of course, we'd make sure our, our doors are closed. Our flaps are now in the cruise position for taxiing. Uh, taking off, we'll just let the plane lift off at about 60 miles an hour. And then we'll climb to oh, a safe height using about 65 miles an hour. And then we'll watch our um, manifold pressures and our RPMs for the various settings, which I'm not going to go into now. They're all there in the literature. But basically, a rate of climb can be about 840 and uh, the cruise will prop will be at 2,000 RPMs or less and the uh, manifold 29.7 or less. So just a few little notes there and I hope that you have a good time. That's it, you're ready to taxi, you're ready to go. Have a good time, thanks for watching. Comments are appreciated and uh, I'll try and get out that electronics business here shortly. Thanks so much, have fun, bye bye.